Street. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their men. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. We're going to have our borders nice and strong. We're going to build the wall. Build the wall. Going to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall, and Mexico's going to pay for it, right? I Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. Right. We'll be here tomorrow. Jim Elliott from Jedburgh was seriously hurt in the accident on the A68 at Harriet's Field between Jedburgh and St Boswell's. He later died of his injuries. His wife Dot was also seriously injured. 18-year-old Lisa Bahamani, who was driving the other vehicle involved in the incident on the 13th of April, died that evening. An Edelston man who had sex with a 14-year-old girl in his car has had his name placed on the sex offenders register. 21-year-old Kieran Austin admitted to having underage sex with the girl at Scott's View in April 2014. Jebra Sheriff Court heard he was 19 at the time. A not guilty plea to having underage sex with the girl's 13-year-old friend at his home was accepted by the Crown. Sentence was deferred for reports until the 13th of June. A Selkirkshire councillor says that while it's regrettable the swimming pool and leisure centre in Selkirk will be closed throughout the summer, the end result will be worthwhile. Councillor Vicky Davidson was speaking after it was announced that the local pool would be shut from this weekend until September to allow for refurbishment. This £550,000 scheme includes a new fitness studio and reception. Councillor Davidson believes it's better if the project goes ahead as scheduled. It's unfortunate that the agreement has taken a while to, to be confirmed. Um, and that has meant that the, the closure, which we hoped was going to um, start last autumn, has had to be postponed and now will take place over the summer. But it's best to get on with the, the work. And to be honest, when all the flood scheme work is happening in, in Selkirk and there's so much disruption, I would rather we just got it done. I think the best thing is just to get on with the work. And by next year, there'll be a range of different improvements in Selkirk. There'll be a lot of landscaping around the pool from the flood schemes. And I think we'll have a much improved facility. Borderers have just over a week now to give their views on the region's waste services. The council is keen to hear what locals think of present provision and how things might change in the future. Colin Colthard reports. The first phase of a consultation by Scottish Borders Council was launched last month and so far hundreds of members of the public have taken the opportunity to tell the local authority how they currently use waste and recycling services and how they feel about potential changes. As part of a council review which is being driven by a number of factors, including the need to reduce the amount of waste being sent to landfill. Last year, over 30,000 tonnes went to landfill in the borders, the equivalent of more than 3,000 refuse collection vehicle loads. It meant that the council had to spend £2.5 million on landfill tax. The council says all responses from the first phase of the consultation will be used to develop the council's new waste management plan, with a final consultation phase expected to take place at a later date. To take part in the survey, you can access it online at www.scottborders.gov.uk forward slash waste survey. Paper copies are available from libraries, contact centres and community recycling centres. The deadline for responses is Sunday the 15th of May. Well, how did you celebrate your stag do? It's safe to say for most it didn't involve winning the Orkney Rugby Sevens with all of your brothers. That's what people's player Donald Anderson did last weekend ahead of his wedding to Abbey tomorrow. His three brothers David Callum and Rowan were also in the people's team. In racing, St Boswell's owner Paul and oh, his owners Paul and Claire Rooney landed the feature two-mile handicap chase at Kelso's penultimate meeting yesterday with the Tom George trained always on the run. Scottswell produced a game front-running performance to win at his local track for Jebra trainer Harriet Graham. The Selkirk handler Stuart Coulter was also in winning form, saddling Ash Park to the, win the conditional jockey's handicap hurdle race with his teenage son Sam on board. And then last night's East of Scotland football, Dan's beat Herrick Watt University 3-1 at Newhawthorne Park as I'm out United were beaten 6-2 by civil service strollers down at Warner Park. 
The border's weather now in most places will be dry this afternoon with the last of any drizzle over high ground gradually dying out. It will also become brighter with a little sunshine breaking through. Temperatures rising to 13 Celsius with a light southerly, south, light southerly breeze. Tonight will be clear with clear, sorry, dry with clear periods and light winds. It will be quite a cold night with temperatures in rural spots falling to 3 degrees Celsius. Light look for tomorrow. All parts will stay dry and bright with some hazy sunshine. More news from the borders at half past four. On BBC Radio Scotland. John McDonald, the Inverness Texter. I'm not a football fan, and therefore... You were talking about Hillary serving this audience. This, this audience has moved on. They've changed. You look at feminism, for instance. It's, it, it, hers is a sort of dinosaur version of feminism. We had Madeleine Albright doing that. There's a place in hell for a woman that doesn't support another woman. She, she's yesterday's news. Well, that, that may be, and that will certainly be the campaign that Mr. Trump will fight. But he, here's the you You conceded that he's a lot of ground to make up. Yeah. Doesn't mean he can't do it. But here's the issue. The Clinton campaign will be stocked full of cash. It'll be incredibly well financed. Yeah. So far, Donald Trump has spent 36 million of his own money, or either in grants or in loans to his campaign, and he's raised 12 million. 12 million. In British terms, that's like tuppence yeah. for an election. But how does he now raise the money given that so even the Koch brothers, mm -hmm. biggest Republican bank rollers, have said that they would probably rather have Mrs. Clinton? Well, I think what's going to happen is obviously you're going to have the machine of the Republican Party of the RNC behind you, and this is a man that raises cash for a living. So I think things will change. That. But that is actually he borrows cash for a living. He borrows cash. Well, that's, 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 that's how he that, 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 is, yeah, that Andrew, I will concede, is the biggest obstacle he has is, is the getting money. the money in the machinery. And we but, but remember, but remember though, this is a movement that he is he has catered, that he has created. And that is a very strong, and this is taking off like wildfire. Well, we, we've yet to see that. I mean, it's certainly true in the Republican primaries. And, and I commentators think, I think like me should be very yeah. careful what yeah. we say, because we've called lots of these things uh, wrong over the past uh, year. But are you, are you aware that the two living Republican former presidents uh, first, yeah. are likely not to endorse him. But then again, Mr. Bush, uh, the W didn't get involved in the last election either. They're staying out of it, and, which is fine. But it doesn't help when it comes to raising money, does it? And your candidate is going to be bankrolled by Wall Street. <laughs> okay. And what you've got to remember, I mean, I suspect that this year, despite all the surprises so far, it's going to be like 1972 was for the Democrats and McGovern, and 1964 was for Goldwater. You can already see with the Koch brothers, but also with others, there are 435 congressmen up for re-election. There's a third of the United States Senate. They don't want to be dragged down by Trump, and they, many of them, will distance themselves from supporting Trump in the hope that they save their own... In 72, I think the government, uh, the only state he won was Massachusetts. Correct. Mm. Are you saying it's going to be that bad this time? No, what I'm saying... That, that, that bad for the Republicans? What I'm saying is that the Republican hierarchy and those who are standing for office who think they're in tight races will distance themselves from the party nominee because he's going to be a drag on the ticket all the way down to Doncaster. Well, that's, a, uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, point. Uh, Charles, because I've uh, seen over the past mm. two months three sets of major Republican strategists, seniors who mm. fought. One had been at the core of every presidential Republican campaign for 40 years. And all of them said to me, if Trump leads the ticket, we'll almost certainly lose the Senate and we might even lose the House. Well, I think things have changed. Now that he is leading the party, he's going to have to unify it. And again, the, qu the question I would put to these different senators or the voters that say they're not going to vote Trump, is why would you vote for Hillary Clinton, who is going to change the Supreme Court, could damage the Second Amendment, you know, what would you, I will, ta I will, I will say she, to Trump, she, know, listen, she can only change the Supreme Court if she's got a majority in the Senate, and Mr. Trump may be about well, to do that. She, she's going to probably have several appointments, whoever the next president will have three or four appointments in the Supreme Court, and if you really want to risk that, that just to me is lunacy. I'll, I'll, you know, listen, Trump was not my very first choice. Who was? Uh, I, I was probably looking at uh, Walker and Rubio originally. Um, oh, that ship sailed that, a long that, time ago. That went away a long time ago. Yeah, 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 well, I, I, I actually, Ooh, I, I, I thank Trump for that. Is he pro-NATO? 
Do we count on him for our defense? Yeah, I, I think he'll, you know... Because he hasn't said anything like that at all. Yeah, well, uh, he... He's not well, talked he, to us, though, is he? He's not. No. no. David Cameron's offended him. Yeah, no, but what I mean is not talk to the outside <laughs> world. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. yeah. got the White House that it needs to get ignored. I'm used to it, because they used to say there's no votes in Britain. You know, they don't care about us. Yeah, so, no, I understand that, but yeah, every candidate has a policy. It's clear that Hillary Clinton is... East, and in fact, she will probably be even more pro-NATO than Mr. Obama. We, we have spent... Quite right, in the other time, five minutes talking about the things we always talk about. He's talking about something else. These are new times. They are different times. And the problem with the European audience, uh, it, it watches this orange buffoon and the things that come out of his mouth, and they hear it with a European elite.